So I've been using an Aura ring for over five years now, and I wanna share with you today why this smart ring slash health tracker has remained in my life for so long, and also share with you just some of the most interesting data that I've picked up over that time. So Aura released their first ring back in 2015, but I didn't actually join the party until 2018 when I purchased their generation two ring. Um, we're actually on the generation three ring now. But back in 2018, they were in the press quite a lot. They raised a bit of money and actually Prince Harry was even photographed wearing one of their rings. Ah, simpler times, eh, Harry? Simpler times. So I was very aware back then about the importance of sleep and recovery. And I'd been doing shift work for a number of years. So I wanted something that could start collecting data to help that side of my life. And therefore I stumped up a fairly sizable amount of money to purchase my first Aura ring. So let me just talk you through the basics of what you get in terms of data. All the data is stored in the Aura app. Now there is quite a lot of stuff to look at if you have the desire, but the three main sections really to look at are sleep, readiness and activity. You get a score out of 100 for each of those sections, and if you score over 85 in any of those sections, you get awarded a crown. See, Harry is still living that royal life. <laughs> Lots of different readings go into determining your scores. The ring measures things like resting heart rate, heart rate variability, body temperature, total sleep, REM sleep, deep sleep, sleep timing, and even time it takes to get to sleep. Now the way I use the data is not to obsess over just particular numbers, but actually to look at trends over time. And in fact, Aura actually has a whole section of the app dedicated to trends. Now over my five years of use, I have been able to monitor whether I'm getting ill, whether I've fully recovered from an illness, how recovered I am from a big exercise effort, and even how I'm adjusting to jet lag. So some of the most interesting times for me to look back on in terms of data are the times when I had my operations to remove neuroendocrine tumors from my body. So back in 2021, in August 2021, I had a fairly sizable liver resection now, I didn't take my ring with me into the hospital, so I don't have the data for when I'm actually in the hospital. I think I spent about nine days in the hospital, um, which obviously would have been interesting, if not a little bit scary, because yeah, not having a go, but our hospitals aren't exactly designed for good sleep and recovery. In fact, I don't know if I slept at all whilst I was in there. But if I look at the data from when I returned home, it makes for some interesting viewing. So I had a readiness score on that first day, 16. My body temperature was elevated, my resting heart rate was high, and my heart rate variability was in my boots. Slowly but surely, those numbers began to improve, and I remember at the time finding that encouraging, actually, because it's a worrying time to spend so long feeling really fragile, but that upward trend in my data was actually comforting. However, it wasn't until one whole month later that my heart rate variability score started to show improvement. My resting heart rate returned to normal six weeks post-op, and it was 45 days after my operation that I got my first readiness crown. Get in. I feel like I've learned quite a lot from using my Aura Ring, but let me give you three pretty basic things that I've learned. So if I go to bed after midnight, regardless of the amount of sleep I then go on to have, my sleep scores and my readiness scores really do suffer. And that also correlates with how I feel in the morning after a sleep like that. I often feel, well, I feel hungover if I go to sleep after midnight. And trust me, all I've been drinking is that sweet, sweet H2O. <laughs> Eating late at night affects my sleep quality. So if I've eaten something quite late, then I seem to take longer to drop into those REM cycles and those deep sleep cycles. So my overall sleep score and my readiness scores suffer from that. Long periods of using screens just before going to sleep affect how long it takes me to then get to sleep, which then in turn obviously affects my sleep and my readiness scores. Now obviously it's no real surprise, we kind of know that, don't we? But it's just interesting to see the data to back that up. So I'm very aware now of not spending long periods of time on my phone, for example, before I go up to sleep. Um, something like reading before bed is much, much healthier and better for my sleep. So I get a lot out of using my Aura Ring, but I have to be honest with you, I have actually stopped using it during the day and kind of exclusively use it now as a sleep and recovery tracker. There are a couple of reasons for this, with the main one actually being that I don't find the activity data that useful. You get a step count and a calorie burn, which is okay, but it's not really anything special. 
And that ties in with the other reason that I don't really use it during the day. I probably would wear it 24 hours a day, even though the activity data doesn't do that much for me. But it's not the most subtle piece of equipment. It's, it's lightweight and pretty comfortable, but it is a little bulky, so it's a nighttime thing for me. You can record live workouts through your Aura Ring too, but I have a Garmin watch for that, so I don't really see the need to use that function. So I've got my Garmin, but I would actually be interested to try out some other activity trackers to use during the day. One of the ones I'd like to try out is a Whoop strap, which you may have seen advertised. The advertising seems to be everywhere. But yeah, that would be one I'd like to try out. I mean, do any of you guys use a Whoop strap? Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments below. I have actually been testing another smart ring recently. I was lucky enough to be sent a ring from the company Ultra Human, the Ultra Human Ring Air they sent me which is a direct competitor to the Aura Ring. And I actually find the design much more sleek and subtle, but it has struggled a little bit to pick up my low heart rate during the night. So the accuracy for me hasn't quite hit the mark yet. Although they do assure me that they are updating their algorithms all the time. So hopefully there will be an improvement in that in the near future. Now there is a big advantage to the Ultra Human Air Ring, and that is the one-off flat fee to buy the ring, and that's it. And that brings me to a con of the Aura Ring as a product, and it's that they actually charge a monthly subscription fee. Now it's not a huge amount of money, it's between six to seven dollars, depending on where you are in the world, per month. Now I was kind of lucky to have bought my Aura Ring when I did, because I was given a, spe given a special price to upgrade to a generation three ring, which I paid, and with that upgrade, it meant that they gave me lifetime access to their membership scheme, so I never have to pay any subscription fees. Uh, it is a little annoying that new members do have to pay that, that fee, even though it is a small one. However, I do understand that if they want to keep innovating and releasing new features, then a subscription-based model perhaps, perhaps makes sense. And on that, over the five years I've been using the Aura Ring, they have brought out a lot of new features over that time. I don't use it a great deal, but something that's been introduced and improved over time is the Explore page, where you have access to guided and unguided meditations, breath work and sleep stories. Circles is something that they've recently introduced. Not something I've got involved with yet, but the idea is you create a community where you can share your data with those close to you. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what they introduce in the future. So I'll link Aura in the description down below if you want to check them out. And I'll also link Ultra Human Ring Air down below as well if you want to have a little look and compare the two. But yeah, I love my Aura Ring. It makes up part of my health tracking system and I won't be going anywhere soon. I've got no desires to move away from my royal duties, and I'm gonna go and try and gain as many crowns as I can. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.